Okay, this lesson is another easy one. It's all about words and backdrops. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can use MovieZoo's text generation tools to create your own words. And I'll also explain and demonstrate the use of backdrops, one of the most powerful objects that you can use in the MovieZoo animation. Let's head over to MovieZoo, which I've just opened, and it's sitting in the default uh, sort of state right here. Let's crack on with words then. Create, create words. This little box pops up, the screen darkens. This is quite cool. You can type in any sort of sentence in here and create, and it will create a little word object for you. And the word object that you get, you can right click just like any other object, change its color, let's make it uh, blue, and we can change its glow. If you crank up the glow, then it means that the lighting won't affect it so much. We also have all the usual sort of um, physics options to tick and lighting options to tick as well. Now, let's delete that because I skipped over something. Let's do that again. Let's go to create, create words. Let's type it. Barry is not cool this time. So we've got an option right here that says group. Can we group the letters together or should we leave them ungrouped? Let's do that ungrouped and create. What that basically does is it creates this exact same sentence, but you can see that each little letter has been made separate. And indeed, each little letter can be controlled separately as well. There we've got a, a green O. Let's delete all that lot again and go back to the group version. Create, create words. It's usually more useful if you type something and leave it as grouped together. Because in that situation, we've got a word that we can move and rotate as one, that we can colour and affect its properties as one object. But also, if need be, we can right click it and go bang, ungroup. And it separates these letters into their individual components again. If at any time you wanted to group that back into a word, then it's quite easy to do. You would use the control button or the shift button to select all the letters, go to edit, group and you've got it back. This time with the Z floating in midair. And that's kind of how you do words in MovieZoo. Next thing we're going to cover are backdrops. Create backdrops. Like I said at the start, these are among the most powerful objects that you can use in set building. We designed them so that you can upload your own photographs or your own camcorder movies or mobile phone footage and put them in these backdrops. We've got all sorts of different shapes and sizes. We've got ones that are curved, um, ones to match the um, the shape of the rectangle that you would find in a cinema or at your home telly. And we also have a ground plane as well. Let's just start with one of these, the widescreen one. When you create a backdrop, these things are super thin. They're just big sheets onto which you can put any image you want at all. MovieZoo ships with a whole bunch of images already in place, so we can put images like this on, or logos and that sort of thing. We can make it luminous, which means that if we've got a really dark set, that'll make it really quite bright. We can do all the usual stuff that you can do with any other object and that you can scale um, backdrops in all sorts of different ways. You can switch on whether it's casting a shadow and or not, but among the coolest things that you can do with backdrops is you can change you can make them scroll, and not only can you make them scroll, but you can set the angle that they scroll at too. And all this stuff is animatable, as you'll find out later on. When something's scrolling in a certain direction, you hit reverse direction, and it goes backwards. That's pretty cool. You can also, on this object, let's just delete it and create a new one. You can put onto this object not just images, but also um, videos that you've made in MovieZoo or in other packages. But here's quite a cool thing. Let me just get rid of some of these boxes. Let me make a character for you. Let's put a fat man over here. And let's point the only scene camera that we've got at the fat guy. There you can see what that camera can see. This is quite cool. Onto this backdrop, we can now project 
cameras we can now project the, what the camera can see onto that backdrop and we can get all sorts of 70s effects as well by putting the backdrop behind the camera it also stands to reason that as if you give this camera which we'll come to later on um, let's see say something like camera shake and what the camera see, sees gets projected onto this backdrop it really is quite a cool feature and I'm going to show you something else you can do with backdrops too let's get rid of him, get rid of that and I'm going to take the camera shake back off of that camera now I kind of whiz my way through the camera set and stuff there, don't worry there's a tutorial that covers cameras uh, elsewhere in, in this bunch of tutorials okay in the meantime though I want to create an object um, the police car is probably a good place to start let's take the police car and turn it side on like this and then behind the police car I'm going to put some backdrops and I'm going to use the super wide format one right there I'm going to go edit copy edit paste to put a copy of that backdrop behind I've put them quite close together so let's just pull them apart a little bit so we can see them again edit copy edit paste so now we've got three backdrops all stacked up behind this police car the next thing I want to do is adjust this camera I'll bring up the camera window again, show cameras window I want to pull this camera all the way back like that and tighten its field of view again don't worry too much about these camera settings we'll go through all of these at, different, at another tutorial now this is when the cool stuff's going to start onto this first backdrop object I'm going to load in an image, I'm going to import one which I've got saved it's this one right here so hopefully you can see I've got a little fence, I'll just pull the this thing out of the way I've got a little fence texture on that one on the one behind that, I'm going to import another image that I painted of trees. And finally, in the one right at the back, I'm going to import a third image that I painted elsewhere called mountains. Now in each of these backdrops, I'm just going to bump up the illumination. and the one at the back and then on the front one we're going to set it we're going to set it moving so the fences are kind of whizzing by quite quickly the trees are kind of whizzing by not as quickly you can think you can see where this is going and the mountains I hardly wasn't by at all. And what we've done here is create a pretty cool little parallax effect that makes it look as though the car is driving. And as long as we pick a camera angle such that we we don't see the edges of the backdrops, then that works quite well. And that's just a couple of the cool effects you can do with movies as backdrop objects.